Hello and welcome to this training video. Today we will learn how to set up an API within Planet9 that communicates directly with a server script. We will utilize a slash get operation to pull data from the script and then use a slash post operation to send some data to the script. To demonstrate both of these operations we will work with an example script I've already made and build an application that utilizes it. Let's get started. Here you can see I have a single script within a project. This script has one table as a resource and runs logic to generate a leaderboard based on the data within the table. Here I will run the script to show the array that's generated as the final output, which consists of objects containing two key value pairs, a username pair and a score pair. And this array is sorted in ascending order based on the score value and it's set to the result of the script. Now we can add a new API to connect to the script. To do this, open the API designer. Add a new API and set the type of the API to server script and then give it a name. Next, create an operation, selecting the calculate leaderboard script to be the server script associated with the operation. And by default, new methods are always slash get. Give the operation a name and we'll use get leaderboard from script. And then next we'll add a definition called data and assign it to the response body of the slash get operation. setting the type to array. Finally, we'll enable for use in the app designer and then we are done. We can save the API and open the app designer. Within the app designer, I'll create a simple full screen app called show leaderboard, which will contain a list and an API that will trigger the slash get operation of the API we just made when the app is first loaded. And then it will set the response of the API to the list component. Here I will also set the model source of the list component to the data definition of the API response, but we'll come back to look at this shortly. Now we activate the app and open the networked log. And since the API is triggered when the app is loaded, we can see the response of the API is coming into the app. Now we can add a standard list item component to our list and start manually binding the title and info properties of the component. Here the binding is as simple as writing the key of the array being sent to the list within the braces. Now after activating again we can see the response of the API showing in the list. Manual binding is easy in this example as we have a very simple data structure being returned from the script, only two key value pairs with a username and a score. But Neptune allows you to add properties to API definitions, which makes it even easier to set bindings within the element properties in your applications. Back in the API designer, here I'll add two username and score properties to the data definition that is assigned to the slash get response body. And now within the app designer, you can see within the model source of the list, the two properties for the data definition being returned by the get leaderboard API. This gives the binding context of the incoming information 
So now, within the properties of the standard list item, I can simply click on the binding name to create the bindings, rather than typing them manually. This is great for more complex applications with many more properties or unusual property names, since you can add descriptions to the properties to help identify which one to bind within the dialog. Another way to configure properties of the definitions is to utilize the JSON import feature. Let's see how to do that. A good method is to use the API client to get a full response from the API. You can then copy the response and use the JSON import button within the properties where Neptune will then automatically generate the correct properties for you. Again, great for use in complex API responses. I will now show a time lapse of me swapping the standard list item for a custom list item, which allows me to use any other custom component within the list. Allow me to display the response data with much more design flexibility, but with all the same binding functionality. So here I'm using a HBox with two HBoxes inside. So I can align the username on the left and the score on the right, and then adjust all the components style class margin properties to space out the elements so the list looks a little better. Now we have a customized list, let's expand the application to communicate with our service script. To do this, I will add an input field and a button, which will allow us to input a minimum score value and submit it with a press of the button. This button press will take the score we've entered in the input field and send it via an API to the service script. And in return, it will generate an updated list which only contains scores that are bigger than the minimum score. To implement this functionality, I will jump back to the script editor and add a new script to the project. This script will be an exact copy of the existing script for now with the same table associated with it. Once that's in place, we can create another operation for our script API to go alongside the existing slash get operation we already made. This new operation will be a slash post and we'll have the new script linked to it. We can give it a name slash get leaderboard from script with minimum score. And since this is a slash post operation, we can add a definition to the request for the operation. So let's add a new one, we'll call it score, and set that to the body of the slash post request, keeping the type as object. For the response, we can use the same data definition as the type array within the response body. Now we can jump back to the app designer, and since we have made changes to the artifacts in another tool, to see the changes reflected here in the designer, we need to press refresh master data. Now we can add the second API resource to our app, assigning it to the get leaderboard API and the slash post operation we just made. Setting the API 200 response to the list component, since it will return the result of the script to the same list we've already put in place, essentially just replacing the data that will already be there. Now we can set up the press event of the button to send data via this new API to the server script. This is easy with the help of code snippets. Within the menu on the left, under API, you can see the automatically generated code snippet for each API within the application. We will take the snippet for the OREST API 1, which is associated with the slash post operation, and paste it into the press event. Then it is as simple as adding the key and value to the data object. The key is a string score and the value is going to be the dot get value method for O input. Now after activating the application we can enter a number into the input field and press the button with the network monitor open. Here we can see the API request that is made to the server script. Note the method is post and the request contains the object 
we just defined in the button press event. Perfect. The response will still be the entire list of scores as we still need to implement the logic within our script to return only the scores higher than the posted value. Let's do this now by jumping back into the script editor and utilizing another code snippet here under the data subheading. The request snippet gives lots of useful constants and are designed to utilize the request data coming into the script. So in this example, we will grab the rec.body line to utilize the data we are passing in the body of our post request from the application. We'll add this into the end of our script with the intent to use the value to filter the list before it's returned to the app. We will rename the data constant to minimum score and then add a log.info of this constant. Here I will show you what that does. If we make another request from our application and jump back into the cockpit, we can search for log and open the system logs for the platform. Under server script, we can see we have some logs and these are generated by the log.info statement. You can also use log.warning and log.error to categorize these logs even further. The most recent log, the one we just generated, contains the object we just sent from the application. Great. Now we have confidence the data is being passed into the script, we can simply create the logic to check each item in the leaderboard array against the provided minimum score. If the item is bigger, it will be pushed into a final array variable, which will replace the leaderboard array one we were setting as the result of the script before. Finally, we can open the application one more time, enter a value of 5000 into the field and press the button. And voila, the list is returned, only containing scores higher than 5000. And that completes the end-to-end -end implementation.